Such an important story. We want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino now. You heard Kaylee Chalmers say it, that this was fueled by climate change, which mm -hmm. makes us all wonder how much has the climate changed and what's it going to look like this winter? What are we thinking? Right, so a couple things on that. First of all, it's hard to get the amount of heat, the heat wave that we had this summer and not have a climate change component to that. Now, there have already been some early attribution studies done on that that, that bear that out. There will be more that are done. The second part of the question about winter and fall, we're still gonna see natural variation. I mean, that sure. still happens. It's not like it's gonna be hot all the time, but we've stacked the deck. And to that effect, let me show you this website. This is NASA's climate change website. The number I wanna key, on, key in on here is here. It's the global temperature, which according to NASA has risen two degrees Fahrenheit since the beginning of the industrial age back in the 1880s here. That's a lot. It may not sound like a lot, but if you zoom in on this like this, you can see it's all been up since the 1960s. There's been some variation year to year. And the reason two degrees, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's because the oceans have such a massive capacity for absorbing heat. It takes a lot of heat to raise the Earth's temperature by two degrees, and that's what we've done. So that sets the stage for the kind of extreme weather that we've been seeing around here, not only locally, but all around the world. So to that effect, let's revisit just briefly our heat wave this summer, our historic heat wave. In case you forgot about it, as many of us would like to, we went from 108, which was a new all-time record high in Portland, to 112 to 116. Keep in mind that 116 is a full nine degrees higher than our previous all-time record high, of 107. That's an amazing jump. That's a lot. And remember up in Canada, they set a national record of 121 at Lytton, Canada, and then the town burned down because of a wildfire. So it's not just the highs though. The lows were also really warm. We had our all time warmest night when we didn't drop below 75 on that Monday of the heat wave. And that's critical because it just doesn't allow us to cool off and recover from the really hot temperatures. It keeps our waterways and streams really hot as well. And of course, it wasn't just Portland. Look at Pendleton. Five days of 104 or better, peaking at 117, which was only two degrees shy of Oregon's all-time record, which was set at Pendleton uh, at 117 on the Tuesday of that heat wave. So what about the second part of Dan's question going into fall? Well, if we look at our fall temperatures going back just to 1970, the last 50 years, we've seen an increase of about two degrees in Portland in our fall temperature, September, October, and November. We've also seen an increase in the number of fall days with above average temperatures, and we're not seeing a lot with below average temperatures, 12 degrees more since 1970, days in the fall with above average temperatures, and this is reflected across much of the West. Now, this is the fall warming around the country. You can see the middle part of the country hasn't seen a lot of warming, but parts of the West have seen a lot, uh, three, four degrees here since 1970. So again, we've sort of primed the pump, Dan, for seeing more warm weather and fueling these extreme weather events that we've been experiencing so many of in the last few years. Back to you.